The space race began almost coincidentally when America and the Soviet Union both got a hold of Nazi blueprints for space travel. German scientist Werner von Braun signed a contract with the US so that he could continue his experiments. However, the Soviets had their own scientist, Sergei Korolev, who was arguably just as much of a genius as von Braun. In the beginning, the USSR got ahead because von Braun wasn't able to start working on a project until five years into his contract. Meanwhile, Korolev had designed the R-7, a multi-stage intercontinental rocket that was loaded with a dummy nuke and launched at a target 4,000 miles away. This only served to increase Cold War tensions because it implied the Soviets could launch an atomic strike at any time with little chance for interception. Following suit, America introduced the WAC Corporal, the first American multi-stage rocket. But that wasn't really the main event, because the Soviets were the first to launch a satellite into orbit with the Sputnik 1. America launched its first satellite, the Explorer, a year later. This was a trend for most of the race, with the US being behind for most achievements. USSR had put the first animal into orbit, the first man into space, first hard and soft landing of objects on the moon, and so on. The main reason we were able to get the upper hand was because Korolev died. And with the introduction of the Saturn family of rockets, landing on the moon, and the victory of the space race would be a cakewalk. Which it wasn't, it was really hard. Which I will now prove by attempting to land on the moon. With the crew at my disposal, I reckon I can do it. The first two attempts failed because I miscalculated how fast I would need to be moving in order to escape the planet's gravity and to warp it the moon. The third and fourth attempts failed because the extra engines I attached weren't actually attached for some reason. What? After those stupid engines didn't work, I decided I would just need to move stupid fast and attached six vector engines on the bottom, along with a skipper. Vectors give an incredible amount of thrust for how light they weigh and are great for vectoring. Hence the name. The skipper is just a pretty basic engine, and I chose it because it reasonably fit with the vectors on the fuel tank, like how it fit there. If the temp was a goof on my part because I accidentally separated too early. The sixth attempt was my final endeavor, and it failed because I ran out of fuel. Unfortunately, I did not land on the moon because I'm out of money and all my crew are dead. Except for Haddock, who was pilot for attempt six and is currently lost in space. Well, I mean, by the lack of fuel on the lander, it was always intended to be a one-way trip. It was just intended to be on the moon. Yeah, I'm no rocket scientist, and this is also easier than real life, so props to real rocket scientist. Thumbs up. Nintendo seal of quality. Undoubtedly, some of the greatest human achievements came from this time, and even after America landed on the moon and the space race was over, tensions only rose as more focus was then put on war. The space race was almost a friendly rivalry when compared to the threat of the apocalypse that came from the rest of the Cold War. Things could have gone differently. Both nations could have easily just ignored space and not be bothered. Or maybe if Korolev hadn't died, who knows what else the Soviets could have come up with. Ultimately, still pretty funny. <laughs>